All right, welcome my friends to another Luminous Mysteries. My name's Tom, and today is March 8th, 2022. Our first reading is Isaiah 55, 10 and 11, and then Matthew 6, 7 through 15. So in Isaiah, I'm going to read off of the USCCB on the first one, and then out of my Bible in the second. Okay, thus says the Lord, just as from the heaven, the snow and the rain and the snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which it is sent for which I sent it. Sorry. And then we got Matthew. Okay. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they have heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for if you forgive others when they sin against you your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others of their sins your father will not forgive you your sins so um, I'm gonna just Go off of what I wrote, and I'll, you know, I think I'll I'll do what I've been normally doing, which is adding commentary now and then. So today we are diving into the bread of life. <coughs> what stood out to me today was this line from Isaiah, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. While I a while back I asked Spirit to give me the gifts of the Spirit, after which Spirit shared with me that gifts are given to those who can use them meaning you must already be in a position to be of service before Spirit will give you the gifts you need to complete the work the Divine Will is asking you to do. According to St. Thomas Aquinas, God is the first mover. God is uncreated and infinite. He, we are created and finite. No one, be, no one can be created from the uncreated and the infinite, from reality itself and life itself, because what is divine is one and undivided. Jesus, who is divine love and divine truth in action, is created from the movement of the prime mover. He is our connection to the infinite. We, therefore, are created from things that, that were created and finite. I can go more into this later if you want. God formed us so that something divine can dwell within us. We and the angels are alike in this manner. We are life receivers. We are vessels formed to hold that spark of divine love. It is this spark that is the bread of life which comes down from heaven. Our Lord Jesus is the sower, and he has given the seed to sow. The seed is the divine spark, the divine light, the divine love that animates, uh, animates us in this body. We are the one who eats of this bread. It is important for us to understand this mystery, because this mystery sheds light on the Holy Eucharist. But more importantly, especially today, is that when we fail to understand this relationship between God and us, we fall into a trap that hell has laid out for us. That trap is the lie that we are our own gods. This comes from when we think we are life, not life receivers. In this inst instance, there is no way to keep us from thinking we are our own God. We then start to worship ourselves before God, and we break that first commandment. 
It is the spark of life that fro- flows from our Lord Jesus and into the consecrated host in the sacrifice of the Mass that changes the essence of the host into the Holy Eucharist. It is this loving spark of life that we receive on our knees in awe at the movement of love that our God gives us. We are life receivers sustained on the very essence of divine love in action, the body of Christ. The heart, God, pumps life into us. We are the vessels of his love. The blood vessels? We in turn bring that essence into the world, changing it forever for the better through our loving service for each other. As described in the Lord's Prayer we read today, Our Father, divine love, who art in heaven, who is found in the uncreated infinite, holy is your name, Jesus, divine love and action. Thy kingdom come when thy will is done. When we too act on the divine love that animates us, Give us our daily bread. Give us our divine love daily, or give us your divine love daily. For we are life receivers and live to receive and live to give in return. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. This is the sword of forgiveness that Jesus teaches us how to wield. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. As we live in this way, we are delivered from a life of chosen death and brought into a new life of love and are brought into heaven on earth through our united will with the holy and divine will of God. This all starts from the bread from heaven, the spark of animating life that the Father bleed breathes through his Son and into us. This is done in the Holy Eucharist and also the Holy Spirit because we know not where it blows. We know where it comes from, God, but not where it goes. This leaves God's love the opportunity to work even in those who reject his love in the host. This is how heaven saves the lost. Through the movements of the Holy Spirit, which are intensified by our prayers of love, sent back to God as a tithing for his love that breathes breathes life into us, his vessel. Sorry, apparently I'm stumbling over breathes quite a bit, but (laughs) bear with me. This can all be thought about like the sun. God is the sun in heaven. And the rays of light that flow from from the sun are the love that flows from God. The angels and the saints are like giant trees that are completely receptive to the light, the love and the wisdom that flows from the sun. They become instances of God's love and wisdom in themselves because they are completely united to that love in every way and aspect of their being. This spiritual warmth and light not only affects the angels and saints, but us as well here on earth. We are affected precisely in proportion to how receptive we are to that light and love that flows from God. Our receptivity develops in proportion to our love for God. It will not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. That love that God sends out and into us will return after it has changed us into better receptacles and vessels for that love. That is the will of God and the ends for which the divine will seeks to accomplish. That is the will which we are chosen in order to become saints as well and to receive our share of Jesus' glory in heaven as Jesus' divine love in action and that love is the light and life of God. Glorify, love, the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. 
I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The fear of losing the love of God in hell. Psalm 34, 4 through 5. That was one of our responsorial psalms. Um, I kind of use two words interchangeably. Um, wisdom and truth uh, kind of interchange. And um, love and divine goodness interchange uh, a lot in, in how I speak. So the rays that the sun shines down upon us, the sun, which is the love, the light, and that, that is God, are divine truth and divine wisdom, which are interchangeable, and divine love and... just forgot <laughs> and divine love and um uh apparently I, I can't read and speak at the same time but I, th I think you're following me here so it is those two things that um the saints and the angels are completely receptive to the 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 that duality you know we we see that in what flowed from Jesus's heart when it was pierced by the spear water and and uh wine right uh or water and blood because that is that is what flows directly from the heart of God and Jesus is God's love in action so it it there's so much that ties together and layers upon each other to help us to fully understand these mysteries. And it is when you spend time with the word and looking at how the word in the Bible is connected to each other, both in the new and the old, right? We, we know the, the new completes the old. But the old also, for it, it's the it's the um, foreshadowing or you know the prophecy of the new. So I don't know as I <clears throat> as I grow and spend more time, um, I'm sure I'll 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 be expanding upon this. And as I was working today, um reflecting on on things um i think more and more my calling is to help fill in the gaps that or help pick the ball back up that our church has dropped and that is explaining and sharing and truly being in love with the lord and the eucharist and and diving deep into that mystery to help so many of us. I mean, you, uh, the last poll I seen just in the Catholic Church alone, only 30% of Catholics, church-going Catholics, not Catholics that just identify and show up on, on the major holidays, but church-going Catholics, only 30% of them believe in the real presence of our Lord in the Eucharist. And I think that's why the Holy Spirit has shared with me so many amazing Eucharistic miracles, um, just personally. And a, a few of you that know me and, and personally, I've, I've shared some of the Eucharistic miracles that I, that I've experienced. Um, and, you know, I, I know without a doubt that Jesus is, you know, in the love in the spark and the light of God is 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 present in the Eucharist. Um, so hopefully, as the Spirit shares more with me on my journey, I can help you come to that same concrete belief, that same love that drives you to your knees when you receive the Eucharist, because truly we are nothing without God. 
We are nothing without God's love. And when you fully understand that, you, you cannot receive that love just in your hands. You cannot receive that love on your feet. It's... It changes you because you changed, right? Um, I, I'm failing to find the words to to explain. So maybe uh, what I'm what I'm kind of just babbling on about is who knows? Maybe more of this will go into explaining the Eucharist deeper, or I'll find more time to write more specifically just on the mysteries of the Eucharist and the Eucharistic heart of our, our Lord Jesus. Um, because that's the core of our Catholic faith. And that is the one thing that all other Christians reject completely. Even the Lutherans do not believe in the presence of our Lord in the Eucharist. It is that truth is what the evil one really is truly fighting to keep you guys from fully understanding because when you when you receive that love in fullness you are you are changed every time you receive it and that goes into why I don't know if I chose St. Germain or she chose me, but she was so devoted to receiving our Lord. So many of her miracles were attributed to that. Were given to her just to receive our Lord. And even in the 1500s, it was, it, it was important. And even today, it's important. And we know through St. Germain that just alone the fact that she completely understood that miracle and that love that was available to her that is what changed her into that receptacle that was so perfectly attuned to receiving that love and that is what granted her heart the keys to heaven and that's our goal that's our goal as Christians. This is our goal as Christian, as a Christian community. This is our goal as disciples, the scipuli, students of Christ, to learn about that love and to learn how to be perfect receptacles to that love. And it's available to us absolutely every day. And so many of us, people that claim to be students of Christ, openly reject it and they don't know why and they've never thought about why they reject it so thank you all thank you all so much for listening to me babble on about god's love apparently apparently people like it as much as i do so like subscribe share and i hope you all become purple perfect receptacles perfectly attuned your leaves blossom from you to receive the love and the rays, the divine wisdom and the divine truth that is offered for us, that shines on us every day, every minute from our God. I love you all. Have a wonderful day.